Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Makia. So today's video is going to be about my top four things I wish I knew as a new data analyst. So I'm doing this because I hope that it will help you guys because I feel like a lot of you that watch my channel are interested in data analytics or probably are new data analysts. So I just want to give you some tips to help you throughout your role or throughout your career. So let's get into it. So the first thing that I wish I knew as a new data analyst is how important Excel is. So I used Excel in my prior role before I became a data analyst. I used it on a daily basis in reporting, but I didn't think that I would be using it as much as a data analyst. I thought I would primarily be learning how to use dashboards and do coding and provide my clients or stakeholders with information that way, but no. Excel is very important. So if you don't know anything about Excel, please get your skills up if you are looking to get into data analytics because Excel is such a commonly used tool for technical and non-technical people. So everybody uses it. And a lot of stakeholders and clients want their data provided to them in a Excel file. And even if you go through like creating a Tableau dashboard or a click report or something like that and like some kind of data visualization tool, what I've noticed they do is they just go to the dashboard or go to the report <laughs> and they just download the data as an Excel file. So you've gone through all this work to create this beautiful dashboard with all these charts and graphs and they don't care nothing about your dashboard, okay? Like, that's what I've learned. They do not care about my dashboards. Like, that is, what I've learned is that dashboard is for me. That is for me to show off to my peers that are on my team or in my organization. Like, that's for them that I put, that's something that I put on my performance reviews. Nine times out of 10, my, my clients, my stakeholders don't care nothing about my dashboard. They just go to it, click and download the Excel file. So please be mindful. Please know how to use Excel. Please make sure you know how it's formatted. And also you may receive data from your clients or stakeholders on data that they want in a dashboard. So you need to know how to format it because y'all, they will hand you data that's like in merged cells. That's not going to play well. So just make sure you're familiar with Excel and how to use it, okay? So the second thing that I wish I knew as a new data analyst was how to do the same thing multiple ways. So for example, when I began, um, I primarily was working in Teradata and with Teradata, I have the ability where I can create a temporary table. So it's my table, it belongs to me, it has the data that I'm pulling from different sources together. And I would just create, and I think I told you guys this before, I would just create multiple temp tables and join them together. But that's not the best use of time and space and coding. So yes, you can do it that way, but a better way to do it would be to learn how to do a subquery. And when I started using Microsoft SQL Server, I could not create tables to do all that. Create a table here, create a second table, join these tables to you can. So everything that you're doing has to be through joins and subqueries. So that's why I say learn how to do the same thing multiple ways, whereas you end with the same result, but you have to go about doing it a different way. Learn how to do it because one, the data may not come out correctly, or you may have to work in a space where you can't do your query the same way you normally would. Like I can't do my temp tables in, in Microsoft SQL Server. So I had to learn and really use subqueries. And I love using them now, but in the beginning, I didn't know how to do that. So it was kind of like a uh, what am I going to do? So that's something I wish I knew in the beginning. So please learn how to do the same thing multiple ways. This goes for your dashboards as well. Learn how to accomplish the same thing 
multiple ways, kind of like in Excel. You can summarize data by using a pivot table, but you can also use the index match function, if I'm not mistaken, and come up with a similar end product. So just learn to do the same thing multiple ways because you never know when you're going to need to use an, or go about getting your data together in an alternate way. So the third thing that I wish I knew is to document my work. When I tell you guys, like, I don't know what I was doing. I was out here just being reckless and I didn't think far ahead. So document your work because you never know. Like I've had clients that I've worked with or stakeholders that I've worked with two, three years ago. And I'm like, oh, remember you ran that one report for me? Can you do it again? And you digging through years of files and emails and trying to figure out, do you still have the code? And when you look at the code, what were you doing? So comment out a section in your code and just document what that piece of code is doing. This is also useful if you need to hand that code off to someone else to take over, for example. So document what each stage is doing because they didn't create the code. They weren't with you when you created the code. So that can be helpful if you're handing off a piece of code to someone else because it can be difficult to read through someone else's code. So please document not only for yourself, but also if you need to hand that code off to someone else to work on. They know what you were doing and you don't have to have these long meetings and calls to, to discuss and, and explain what it's doing. And then if someone's doing something specifically in the code and you're like, that doesn't make sense why they're doing that, that comment, that commented out section can help you understand why they were doing that. And you may need to tweak the code to do something different because that's not what you needed. And my fourth tip is going to be about communication. I know as data analysts, we all think we need to know like, like, or we all believe that technical skills are the most important thing and technical skills are important. However, your soft skills, like your communication skills are also important when you're a data analyst, because you have, you are the one that has to do all the digging, do all the coding, and you have to present your findings to leadership, I've had to present to directors, I've had to present to VPs, and I didn't think I was gonna be talking to anybody. I, I didn't, but you have to be able to communicate to others your findings, and you're more than likely going to be presenting to non-technical people. So you have to find a way to speak to them in layman's terms, you have to find a way to give them this information. Like I remember I had a professor that said, you have to talk to them like they're five. And that's absolutely true. You have to make it simple and easy that anyone can follow along with. So communication is very important when you're in this role. I don't know of any data analyst that doesn't present to stakeholders or to a client or anyone like that just hands their project off to someone else. So it's you, like I work primarily solo on my projects and these are my findings, these are my presentations, these are my recommendations. So I have to present them in a way that anyone can understand because they're not gonna understand my technical jargon. Your clients don't care. You just have to explain your findings in a simple and easy way, which is why I try to, when I can, I try to make it as simple as possible because I know everyone's not technical and examples help, you know? So, so those are the four things that I wish I knew as a new data analyst. If you have any other kind of like tips for new data analysts, please leave them in the comments down below and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.